Once we can set up a simplex method problem as a simplex tableau, we have a little bit of work to do before we can start doing any real calculations. We have to identify what we call a pivot. So here's the idea. Let's say we've started with our maximization problem. And again, we're going to assume that it's a standard maximization problem. This will usually be written somehow explicitly in the problem. but for this first example, I'm trying to focus our attention just on the special inequalities which each get converted into equations and then become rows in our simplex tableau. And then we have the objective function which also gets converted into an equation that becomes the final row in the simplex tableau. So once we have converted the problem into a matrix like this, our next step is going to be to perform some operations on the rows like we do when we perform elimination, but with a slightly different goal in mind. So remember when we do Gauss-Jordan elimination, we try to make the left side of the matrix look like an identity matrix. So we try to get ones here on the diagonal and zeros above and below those ones. Well, that's not our goal for the simplex method. We're going to use the same operations, but we're not going to make the left side look like an identity matrix. We're going to make it look a little bit different, one column at a time. So what we have to do is figure out where we're going to make a one, and that entry is called a pivot. So how do we find a pivot? Well, there are two steps. The first thing is you look at all of the columns, you look in the bottom row, and look for the largest negative value in that bottom row. Whatever column has the largest negative value in the bottom row is what we call the pivot column. So you know the pivot's going to be somewhere in that column. Then you look at the earlier rows and you calculate what we call test ratios. To get the test ratio, you do a division, you take the entry in the last column divided by the corresponding entry in the pivot column. Those are the test ratios. And whichever one is smallest is the one you use as the pivot row. Uh, you don't bother with the last row. You only look at the rows that correspond to constraint inequalities from your original problem. So once you find the pivot column and the pivot row, where they line up, that's the pivot entry. Let's look at an example. So this is a simplex ma uh, matrix we get from setting up a standard maximization problem. Our first step is to find the pivot column by looking for the column with the largest negative entry in the bottom row. So in the bottom row, we look at the negative entries the largest negative entry is negative 10. So notice I'm using the word largest, uh, not greatest. So we think of negative 10 as being a larger negative number than negative 7. So the second column is our pivot column. Now the next thing we do, once we have a pivot column, is to calculate test ratios for that pivot column. Do that for each row. So we know we're looking at the second column. To get the test ratios, we take the last column, we take an entry there, and divide it by the corresponding entry in the pivot column. So for example, we'll take this 21 and we'll divide it by this 3. That gives us a test ratio of 7 for the first row. Similarly, we'll take this 100 and divide it by the 10 that comes from the pivot column. That gives us a test ratio of 10. And we don't have to look at the bottom row. We only look at the rows above the bottom row. Whichever row has the smallest test ratio becomes the pivot row. So we have the first row is the pivot row, the second column is the pivot column. 
So the entry that lines up there is called the pivot. F for us, the second column is the pivot column, the first row is the pivot row, and so this entry, this three, is our pivot. And as I've written here, uh, it's common when you're doing this, once you find the pivot, to put a little box around it to help you remember where it is. So once you have the pivot, now we're going to start performing row operations, and our goal will be to change that pivot into the number one, and to take all of the values below the pivot and make them into zeros. We'll do this by adding or subtracting multiples of the pivot row from the other rows. That will come in the next video.